Hiya, it's uh, Chris Bottrell from Chris Bottrell Photography here. Um, I've been meaning, I've been promising that I would do this tutorial um, for quite a while. Um, and it is on converting your stills into um, 3D scenes. Um, now, I did record this a few days ago, but unfortunately my cat and my dog um, were acting like idiots um, and spoiled all the sound. So. Uh, th so this is uh, this is take two. So um, I posted this on a on a Facebook forum. It was the the Sony A7 III forum, and you know, lots of people say, "Oh, it's really really cool. How do I do it? How do I do it?" So if we go to um, Cinema 4D, uh, this is a program that I do a lot of my um, 3D stuff in. Um, as you can see, you can move around in 3D space. This is real 3D. Um, you know, if you were doing the uh, the three D stills in this, um, you, you do it similarish to the way that you do it in um, After Effects. So, yeah, in this program, you can uh, you see I've got um, sunlight there, so I can move the light around. You, you you can do you can do it in this, but it's it's a it's a bit more complicated program to use. Um, whereas, if you're doing it in um, After Effects, now After Effects isn't strictly um, a 3D program. Um, it's a 2.5D program, um, but the principles are um, uh, very much the same. So, um, most important thing uh, is image selection. So you need to make sure that you choose an image that um, that you know that you're going to be able to cut up, slice, and it and it's going to work. So um, let's jump over to Photoshop. Um, this was my uh, my original image here. Um, now the reason I chose this image is because it's got quite a lot going on in there. Um, and as you can see in, in the center here, we've got, this is the focal point. Um, so, but because our, our chap and the baby is in the center, I thought it'd be really nice to do sort of like a, a pan out. Now, when you, are at this stage you need to obviously you know think about what slices um, and layers you're going to cut so this chap here on the left which is this this guy here um, as you can see by the um, by the blurriness of him um, I think I shot this at 2.2 2.8 it was, it was fairly wide um, so you want to cut out him and this lady here on the right so the, these 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 two are on the same focal plane as each other, and then obviously you've got your chap uh, with the baby in the middle. So um, layer zero here is what we will call like a, a background plate. Um, layer three, chap in the middle. Layer two, lady on the right with a pointy finger, and uh, and layer one is the is the guy on the left. Um, now, what you would do to cut these out, I mean, there's plenty of tutorials on online how to do it, um, but I'll just very, very, very quickly show you how to how to do it. So you would select um, your main layer, so none of these would be in it. Um, so let me just get rid of these a minute. So let me just, I don't know, let me just cut him out really, really quickly. So you go to your layer, just use the pen tool, Obviously, this is really, really rough. I'm just, you know, doing this for demonstration purposes. So you cut out what you want with a pen tool. Uh, do a right click and then go make selection. I always like to feather the radius by 0 0.5 pixels. So once you've got that, you can then go to uh, its edit, fill, and content aware so basically what content aware will do is it will just fill in the background as best um, as best as it can really um, now you don't really need to worry about the background too much because you you're not really going to expose it much um, but you know if you've got anything that you think oh god you know oh, shit that looks um you know that looks really really bad you can always just um just jump in with the uh, clone tool the clone t stamp tool um, or, or, you know, I have to, have the hardness down, down quite low. Let's just move the size up a little bit. 
just alt click on where you, what you want to cover up so if I want to get rid of his face there press alt click on there and you can just paint over what you what you don't want um, I hope that's clear um, it was a, sorry it's a little bit a little bit quick but as I say there's quite a few tutorials on on how to do that in um, uh, on YouTube uh, I don't want to have uh, have this video going on you know forever so right now now we're in After Effects. Um, I've got my four compositions here, as you can see. So what I'll do, just to make this nice and easy, is I'll start um, start from scratch and show you how to do it. So if you go to New Composition, I've chosen 4K video size, square pixels at a frame rate of 24. If you're in the States, 24. If you're in the UK, go to 25. Um, and it's quite important down here, you've got where it says 16 bits per channel. Um, your standard is 8 bit, um, which is, you know, JPEG quality, 16 bit, a lot better. 32 bit float is even better, but just for for speed for today, we're just going to leave it at 16 bit. And basically it will just hold a lot more color information. So what I shall do get rid of all of that crap oops got rid of my composition let's do, do another one in a minute so if you um, go and import file your um, PSD that you created in Photoshop and you want to import that as composition and editable layer styles like so so now inside there you've got your three layers here so what we'll do is we'll grab our layers here, control C and go into our comp one and control V and put them in there. So as you can see, these are, um, these are a lot bigger. Um, that's what we want to do. You select all of these layers and um, hit S on the keyboard for scale. And you just want to scale these down. So it just, just fits the screen like that. Okay. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to um, layer new and you want to create a camera. Now, this was shot on a 35 mil. So I'll choose 35 mil on the preset. Okay, uh, and now what we want to do is we want to make all of our layers 3D layers. So they are all now 3D layers. Let's just close all them down while they opened. Uh, and then the next thing you want to do is you want to go to layer new and go to null object. Um, and you just want to grab your camera here and you want to pick whip that up to your null one. So basically what we're doing now is our null object is going, oh sorry, and your null object needs to be 3D, 3D as well. So what's happening now is our camera is being moved by the null object. So if we go and have a look, our camera view, which we've got active camera, if we go and have a look um, from the top, you can see exactly what's going on here. So let me just level all of these up a minute. So when I said before, you've got your, um, you've got all your different layers. So it's, it's, it's always good to re rename them so you know what you're working with. So that one there I'll just uh, call BG for background. Um, this layer is guy in middle with baby. So I'll just call that middle. And then we've got woman on the right. So we'll just call that one right. And then obviously this one here is just left. So we'll call it left. <coughs> Especially if you're working with, you know, um, quite a lot of elements like the uh, 
um, the confetti shot with the flower petals that I did, there was over um, like 150 different layers in that one. So you you know it's always good to sort of like, like name them so you know what you're doing. Uh, so now we've got all of them. If we go back to Active Camera and have a look at top, we'll grab our background layer, and you want to move it in Z space. You just want to move it back, quite far back. And then next you want to go to your middle guy, which will always stay in the middle. Your left lady, no, left guy, you want to bring that forward. And then the other one, you want to bring it, bring it onto, the, um, onto the same focal plane as the previous one. So, people that don't understand this, um, this is your camera. That's your background, so we're looking from the top. That's your background, that's the guy and the baby in the middle, and then you've got your two, two other people here. Now, when you go back into Active Camera, you'll notice things don't look quite right. So, what we need to do is we need to grab the background, and you need to press S for scale, and you just need to scale that background up. Now, don't worry about losing quality. You will not lose quality, um, you know, scaling anything up at all. So, that is the very, very basis, the very, very basics of, of, of doing this. So now that the background is further away from all these other layers, look what happens when I drag, you can see everything moves. So as you can see here where the guy was, um, there's a bit of a gap there. So let's go and grab our left guy. and move him back to where he was originally. And also let's go and grab our right lady with the pointy finger, and bring her over. So if you, uh, to animate this, go to your camera, uh, hit P, uh, and that is for a position keyframe. What we wanna do is we want to grab our camera, sorry, our null, and you wanna Hover over the Z, and you want to drag in, like so. Now, as you can see, here, this is where the, where the chap was originally, um, and he sort of wasn't quite cut out properly. So let's go and grab our left guy, and just move him over, just to cover up the crap. Uh, lady on the right. Let's also do that with her. Let's just drag her over a little bit so she covers up any any inconsistencies. So let's go back to our null object. And uh, we'll push P on there. Um, now we want a keyframe by pushing the stop clock. Go however long you want your animation to last. I'll just do eight seconds. And then what you want to do is you want to grab your Z and you want to go back out to wherever you want it to end. Now the, the thing with these sort of animations is it's always good um, uh, to do sort of like little movement. So if we go back here, you can see it's that's quite a, quite a big a big zoom. So if you want to do a really, really, you know, big, big zoom away you you know do, do it a lot longer do it over maybe like 20 seconds or so so it will it will go you know a lot lots a lot smoother and also you can if you want um yeah maybe let's maybe let's start it with start it like that So as long as you start um, back at the first, um, the first keyframe, um, you can do it. Now, if you want a little bit more control, uh, what you can do is you can delete your null object, go to your camera, and let's just grab this camera. And if you go to the um, to the camera tool, um, basically you can zoom in and out by uh, so the, the zoom function is by pressing the right mouse key holding and dragging and then if you push the middle wheel you can move um, left and right 
And then if you hold the left button, this is the pan around so you can actually sort of do some pretty weird stuff. As you can see, people are actually uh, <laughs> going, off the, <laughs> going off the screen there. But you sort of like get the, uh, get the gist on, um, on how to do it. Uh, I think what I'll do quickly is I'll just open up, um, uh, where is it? Save that. I'll, I'll just open up the original just so I can show you a few things. So, so this is the uh, is the confetti one. As you can see, all this confetti. Um, let me just put that down onto half so it renders a bit quicker. All of this confetti that you can see in focus that that that's real. Um, that that was uh, I think it was rose flower petals. And these ones here are weren't actually there. So if we go into it, you can see it's quite a few layers here. Um, I did exactly the same. I used a null object um, with a camera pick whip to it, um, and you can see all of these all of these petals here. There's there's quite a few of them. Um, if I go to the go to the top, you can actually see um, some of the flowers there. You can see that where when I actually animate this, that the camera actually goes through the petals. That's that's where you get the uh, that really quite nice um, uh, sort of like. Uh, uh, 3d action um what else i did in this is i actually turned on um depth of field as well so you can actually you know as people go you can see that 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 petal there at the moment is is really really blurred um and as you sort of like go further and further away you can see it's slowly slowly starting to um come into into focus again I don't think it actually properly comes into focus because I think I used uh, something really ridiculously shallow on that. Um, I can't actually remember what I did. Um, well, yeah, the aperture in this isn't actually uh, listed in f-stops. Um, it's actually in pixels. Um, but as you can see, if I ramp it all the way up, you can see that like, everything is is totally, totally blurry. Um, put it right down to zero and everything is going to be in in focus so um i hope you liked the uh, the tutorial sorry it was a little bit little bit quick um i just wanted to try and you know get it out there so people can um can sort of like you know start uh, start doing it for themselves i will be doing another one fairly soon using cinema 4d um there are some advantages and disadvantages doing it in Cinema 4D. The main advantages are that you can be a lot more creative and you can actually add real 3D objects in um, if, if you want. Um, the downside is it's quite a complicated program and it is bloody expensive as well. Um, so don't go out and buy it just to do this because I think it's something like $10,000 I think. Um, it costs. Um, anyway, as usual, if you like this tutorial, please hit the um, like and subscribe button. Um, I will be doing more tutorials uh, in the future. Um, so keep safe and peace out.